Four score and many years ago we're talking free TV. Thurman Turkey strolled along his shores to see what he could see. He sniffed the flowers, felt the breezes, thought a thought or two. As he was quoted later, there was nothing else to do. One day old Thurman Turkey showed up, listen from the flock. He had schlepped to Massachusetts where he perched on Plymouth Rock. A ship he spotted frightened him and made his blood run cold. It was back with Pudgy Pilgrim from the bowsprit to the hole. Here comes the neighborhood. Now he heard about those pilgrims and was ready for their flack. Ever since the Magna Carta they ate turkey for a snack He invented something drastic That dropped them to all fours And it turned them into zombies When they settle on our shores That's how a turkey created TV That's right That's why the turkey created TV It sounds stupid but oh Take one look and you'll know That a turkey created TV Mr. Science. Surgeons work for hours and hours trying to save lives. Do they have a special way of talking in the operating room? What exactly do they say to each other? Sincerely, Billy Gutpuddle. Well, Billy, I am glad you asked that question because I've just received a videotape of an actual operation at the Aardvark University Medical Center. Let's look and listen to get an inside view of the high-pressure world of surgery. What's that next to his liver? Oh, that's my garage key. I lost it the last time we had this guy open. Can't someone tune that thing into MTV? Has anyone seen my gum? I can't remember where I stuck it after I took it out of my mouth. I think you left it on top of the lamp. Oh, thanks. Where's that delivery guy from the deli? Gosh, how can you be hungry at a time like this? I'm not hungry. I'm tired. I want to ask him to take over for a while. So you see, Billy, an operation can be just like a party. And that's a scientific fact. Sincerely, Mr. Science. Ben, why do those surgeons wear those rubber gloves? Oh, that's so if they make a mistake, they don't leave no fingerprints on the corpse. I buckle Hogan, and welcome to the Uncle Hogan program. Let's say hello to Pippi. Hello, Pippi. How are you feeling today? I'm fine, Uncle Hogan. How are you? Oh, I'm fine, except for one thing. What's that, Uncle Hogan? I have a terrible cold. <sighs> and I've run out of Kleenex. <laughs> it's easy to cure the common cold. Oh, yeah? All you gotta do is sit with your feet in a bucket of ice water in front of an open window all night long. 
Are you crazy? You'll get pneumonia that way. And everybody knows that a shot of penicillin cures pneumonia, but that you can't cure the common cold. Uh, Karen, I'm just going to go outside for a bit. Okay. No, like that, you're not. It's freezing out there. You're going to catch pneumonia. I feel the need for fresh air. Since when? Since I found out I have a math test tomorrow and I want to catch a cold. Well, how about I help you with it? I don't need any help catching a cold. I meant help you with your math. I'd rather have an ammonia. Mr. Cringe. Mr. Cringe! <laughs> Oh, Miss Towers, what a surprise. Why is there no one supervising the children in the schoolyard? Oh, oh, that, that, uh, Mr. Spedley thought that it, um, uh, it would be good to let the children have a little time to themselves. Time to themselves. Apparently, three children were sent to hospital for stitches because fighting broke out this morning, and someone smashed the gym window. Now, there is total chaos out there. Oh, well, that would be part of our uh, self-defense program, ma'am, uh, so that the children learn how to look after themselves on the streets. <laughs> well... That's actually a brilliant plan, yes. Go tell Mr. Spedley he's outdone himself this time. <laughs> oh, I, I would, ma'am, but it seems he's been uh, put in hospital by a, a third grader. <laughs> On guard, Cringe. How are you doing? You going to have a cigarette? May I help you? Cigarettes are good for you. They are. They make your brain go to twice its normal size. <laughs> go ahead, light one. Breathe the poisons deep into your body. It's fun to smoke. It's good for you. Here, have another. <laughs> Cigarettes are good for you. No, you like the smoke, don't you? <laughs> Go ahead, light it. Light it! It's fun to smoke. It's good for you. It coats your mouth with protective resin. Go ahead. It makes your mouth smell fresh, like an ashtray. Light it! It's good for you. It protects your body from disease. It's a special light. Have another. Light it. You like to smoke, don't you? It's good for you. It's too bad she's out. promised to get along better and we had to talk about our feelings towards each other. Aw, that sounds so nice. <laughs> it was. They had donuts and the psychiatrist was really cute. But Hillary, did it help your family? Yes, um, my mother gained weight and I dumped Mitch Harmon for the cute psychiatrist. <laughs> How's it going, Vince? Good, life is good, and I heard that you have a date tomorrow. Uh, do you want to borrow some of my cologne? Mm, I'd rather use your motorcycle. You're far too young to ride my bike. Well, I'm also too young to smell like a rotting corpse. My cologne doesn't smell like that. Well, at least the girls say it does. <laughs> oh, now, 
Now hold still, or I'm never going to get the practice. I need to be a doctor. Here, let's see about your blood pressure. All right. Yeah, that looks right. Now, let's test your reflexes. Okay, now swish this around in your mouth and spit. That's gross. What flavor is that? Oh, it's Brussels sprout and liver. <laughs> Yummy, huh? Doctor, I can't stand it anymore. Everything here is either gross or painful. Oh, yeah, really? Why do you think I got into this business in the first place? <laughs> Now, let's really have some fun, huh? <laughs> this is my favorite. Uh-huh. Do you still have the original teeth? Yeah, yeah, I sure do. Yeah, I sure do, Sonny. <laughs> but they look so white and healthy. You must take great care of them. Oh, no. No, these are dentures. There's my real teeth. Saved them all, yeah? They're as good as new. Oh, gross! Was it my breath? Oh, good. Turkey crossing. I once crossed a turkey with a penguin. I got a very cross penguin. Now, back to turkeys. of the daily newspapers, they burst into being, bringing with them a blot on a bedeviled humanity. Invasion of the Killer Bees! They came from a dying world, and now you can see them in the cheapest, most exploitive, most plagiaristic movie ever to scar the big screen. Roger Carvin's Invasion of the Killer Bee. They killed to survive, using methods lifted almost directly from top box office hits you paid good money to see. With scenes reminiscent of Frankenstein, sequences very much like Jaws, and one part so much like Alien were being sued by 20th Century Fox. Invasion of the Killer Bee. The police can't stop them, the SWAT team can't stop them, and the only solution the military could come up with would be far too expensive to shoot, because our B-movie is a real B-movie, with those gruesome thrills you love, and enough good parts to fill a preview. And bad guys are terrific! Rated B. No one under 17 admitted without a ticket. Filmed in Exploitovision. <laughs> oh. Oh, <laughs> 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 
Ready, aim, draw. <laughs> Voglio una tavola in latte brazza, nella partita un po' da maggia fa. Voglio che sto, voglio che sta faccia, 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 voglio che sta So you think you want to be a waitress? I want to serve food to hungry people who will give me tips for excellent service. Well, now that's a great idea, honey, but do you think you're going to be able to handle an order like uh, ham on rye with mustard and a side of fries, change that to ham on white bread with mustard and no fries, or change that to ham on a cottage with cheese and stop, a side salad? Stop, stop, I'm confused. Well, that's what you're going to have to do, honey, and you're going to have to go around the tables and collect up all these little bits of garbage that people leave on there. The people are going to be spitting in their coffee. They're going to be leaving a tip in the ketchup. You're going to have to fish for it, honey, and I mean fish for it. I mean, they're going to be leaving little crusts of bread that the kids have sucked on and chewed on and put in their nose, and you're going to have to pick this stuff up and clean it away, and if you want your tip and they've hidden it underneath, say, a piece of pizza that's been all chewed and spat back out, well, you're going to have to go and get your tip from under that... Dessert, sir. Oh, yes. I'd like the baked Alaska, please. Certainly, sir. I guess I should have ordered the jello. about fortune telling. A guy wants to know how we make our tuna fish. <laughs> we threaten the cattle. <laughs> uh, oh, wait a minute. <clears throat> yes? If the earth is 160 million years old. Yes? And eggs are 29 cents a dozen. Yes? How old am I? 64. How did you guess? My brother Louie is 32. Yeah. He's only half as crazy as you. 